welcome to Romanov Ball Cosplay. Today I'm going to be showing you how I create my Masquerade Quality Siege of Mandalore Ahsoka Cosplay. And stay tuned to the end for some amazing and beginner-friendly tips for making your own Ahsoka Cosplay. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Starting off the materials, I have this beautiful navy four-way stretch spandex for her leggings. I think the texture adds such a beautiful element to the costume. Next, you've probably seen this navy cotton duct. I ended up using this for her gloves and her boot covers. Now for one of the most defining parts of the costume, the dress. This is Yaya Han's four-way stretch navy cosplay fabric. I really love the texture, it helps give a really realistic feel. Ending off the fabric, I use this beautiful grey wool for the cape. Finishing things off with these beautiful hematite beads, I ended up putting these on the shoulders of the cosplay. When it came to constructing the leggings, it was pretty straightforward. I'm just using a pair of leggings I already had and tracing it onto the fabric. Then I stitched it together with a zigzag stitch. Now for the dress, I traced the pattern I wanted onto my original, which was very ill-fitting. Next, I cut out the pieces using them as my pattern. Now I'm just cutting out the pattern onto my fabric. Now for the dress details, this was hands down the most difficult part of the project. Since this is a textured material, I can't use iron on vinyl like most cosplayers do, so I had to come up with a lot of different methods. Originally I had tried ribbon, but it didn't work because the ribbon was too stiff and it ended up looking very bunched and forced. Finally, the method you are seeing here is something I wanted to attempt last year. I decided to satin stitch it. What you're seeing me do right now is I'm using tearaway stabilizer and drawing on the design. I ended up having to cut it out and whip stitch it onto the dress so that way it wouldn't shift. And then I used a three millimeter satin stitch. I had to go over it a few times, but I cannot be more proud of the result. As the name implies, I'm now tearing away the tearaway stabilizer. Once that was complete, I sewed the dress back together. Next, I sewed the hematite beads mentioned earlier over EVA foam which I had painted. My main goal with the dress was to give it a realistic touch that the original just doesn't have, not to mention use different textures to make it stand out. Now moving on to the armor, I'm drafting it onto paper and then cutting out of various thicknesses EVA foam. For the parts on the sides, I used my original for my first armor, and then I'm covering it in the same fabric I used for the dress to give it a unique texture. Now using 3mm EVA foam, I'm cutting out the armor details. Then I glued everything with contact cement. After that, I dremeled down all the pieces of armor. Here's what the pieces will look like together. I really like the texture I was able to add using the fabric. You'll see later how I attached the armor pieces so that way they're flexible and wouldn't break. Once I had attached everything, I primed it and painted it. I repeated the same process for the other bits of the armor. I really quickly want to talk about the foot armor. Since I needed a wide range of movement for my masquerade performance and I needed them to be durable, I ended up inspiring them off of gothic armor from the 15th century. I was able to make it so that way all the pieces are connected in the back, making them extra flexible and not as breakable. And I never actually attached them to the bottom of my shoe, making them more pliable. Now I'll explain how I made the hip armor flexible enough for my masquerade performance. As you saw, there is fabric between each of the armor pieces. You see, none of the armor is actually attached to each other. It's really all attached to pieces of fabric. This way I have this beautiful range of mobility. It also really helps reinforce high stress pieces, so I did it to all my armor. Now I'm working on the knee pads. I cut out the desired shape and then cut ridges into it so that way it folds. I 
I heat shaped everything and then used contact cement to glue it all together. Finally, I went over it with DAP Quick Seal so that way my seams are clean. Now I'm dremeling the rest of the armor. Finishing off the armor construction, I'm using 3mm EVA foam for the headband. Now for the most important part, the painting. I'm taking conditioner and I'm putting it over the edges that I want to have a chipped effect. Since I'm airbrushing it with a silver paint, when I wipe the conditioner away, it should have a natural looking chipped effect. I'm going over everything with a metal metallic airbrush paint. Then I'm filling in the ridges on the side with a black airbrush paint. I also mixed a little bit of silver in there. Now I'm removing the conditioner to reveal a chipped effect. Now I take some watered down black acrylic paint and I paint over all my armor, and then I wipe it away giving it a much more realistic metal finish. Once that was complete, I used a dark blue acrylic paint. It looks darker than it is on camera. Once that was complete, I touched it up with some more of the airbrush paint and then weathered everything. I took dirt and then dabbed it into the corners where it would stay, and then I sealed it with a clear gloss. The cape was surprisingly simple. I just folded my fabric in half and cut a net call out, and then I gathered it around the collar. The gathering gives a really nice flowy drape to the fabric. Now for the hood, this was surprisingly simple. I basted it with a thread and then I sewed it with my machine. I just draped it over my montrals and it really gave off a nice appearance. Then for the attachment, I cut out a small square of fabric and embroidered the edges. I'm gonna put a magnet into the center. Now for a little bonus project, the helmet. I got this amazing pattern by Tristan Maker. Please go check out his channel. He also has a very awesome video that taught me how to do this. I had never made something like this out of EVA foam before and his video was super helpful. Then I primed it and painted it with an orange acrylic. Now I'm going to go over some very useful tips which will definitely help you with your Ahsoka cosplay. My number one advice is proportions. I've made this costume twice already and I always had the issue with the costume just being too big and it made me look very short. So what I'd really recommend doing is making the costume as as fitting as possible. I ended up making the hip armor much smaller and the dress a lot shorter, which helped make me look a lot taller. I also speak about this in my Ahsoka headpiece video which definitely check out after this. Number two would be really to be creative with textures and colors. You see, The Clone Wars is a very flat show when it comes to its textures, so you really have a lot of creative freedom to do what you want. For example, I use the superhero textured fabric for the dress and then the slight texture on the leggings. It really helps make a difference. Also, I really wanted to give a much more realistic gunmetal or space metal feel to the armor, which I was really inspired by this 3D artist by the name of Alex Poirier's design. This design heavily inspired me for this cosplay. This is the tip for the headpiece, but please get double-sided fashion tape and tape the front of it down, and then tape down your swim cap if you're wearing one. This will make the costume stay on a lot better. This is a tip that can be helpful for any costume. For something like LEDs, but you don't really know either know how to do LEDs or you don't have really the room to put battery packs, is to use reflective tape. I use this on the headband and her gauntlets and it works really great. And I'm gonna end this off with a tip for painting. If Even if you don't have an airbrush, I definitely recommend getting airbrush paint, especially metals. Not only are they good price, but they have really good coverage and they dry pretty quickly, which is really good for when you're crunching.